Let me start off with a provocative statement. In 15 years, 50% of all universities will be gone or diminished. According to a uh, Harvard business professor, uh, Clayton Christensen, who wrote The Innovator's Dilemma and has done a great deal of research both in technology and education and has several projects in that area. Well, for the past eight years, uh, I have uh, been a part of uh, the, one of the first MOOCs uh, where it's basically be, we're working towards mobile education where you can take your cell phone, your tablet uh, with Wi-Fi down to the tide pools and study marine biology, go to the art museum, study art history and art appreciation and to merge uh, a lecture, a hybrid a lecture style with project based and design based learning with a discussion and Socratic method which is uh, two of the uh, most effective ways of learning. Uh, uh, research shows that when you listen to Sage on the stage, uh, students retain 5 to 10 percent of whatever they hear from their professor or their teacher. But if you involve students in project-based or design-based learning, uh, the students uh, retain 50 percent of what they're working on, uh, basically learning by doing. And if one student teaches another student what he's learning, which is a Socratic method, goes back to Greek philosophers, the student that's teaching retains 60% because he has to do a higher mastery of uh, gymnastics and to teach somebody else uh, and be able to be understood. Well, I'm working on, uh, which I'd like to introduce today at this conference, uh, a, a new way of looking at education that will completely disrupt uh, uh, the learning that we've done for the past couple of hundred years. We take the teachers and the professors out of the sterile work environments. We put them in uh, project-based and design-based learning environments, creative spaces such as uh, maker space and robot building teams and artist residencies and nature walks, uh, tide pools, art museums, science projects, and uh, writing, uh, creative writing sh workshops. And the students go from one uh, learning environment to the next to fill out their curriculum of whatever they're learning, whether it be in elementary, middle school, or high school. Uh, what I see in the future is uh, a, a MOOC and creative spaces, uh, which I call Badge Map, and then mentoring uh, in a TV show, which uh, I'm working on called I Want to Be a. And it's basically, I went out to interview three astronauts and I said, what could elementary school, middle schoolers, and high schoolers get involved in for future space and technology? And they said, robotics and hydroponics. And so I went out to a hydroponics farm and uh, d videotaped and did conversations and uh, all the fun things that young people in elementary school uh, can participate in and learning how to grow crops. And, uh, uh, and then I have a big database, the badge map, with all the community gardens, hydroponics, aquaponics farm, and permaculture uh, locations around the world on a layer in Google Maps and um, when they watch the video, they say, find a creative, you know, a, a garden around you. They click it, and it opens up Google Maps uh, oh, seven blocks away. On Thursday is an upcoming hydroponics meeting, um, you know, uh, bring comfortable footwear and whatever. And so the, what, what happens is young people in elementary school then pick up their mentors there as they have discovery and curiosity and and things of that nature. So the program's called I Want to Be an Astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a filmmaker. I want to be an author. I want to be a politician. And each of those environments uh, were suggested by individuals that currently uh, are experts in the field of astronomy or uh, creative writing or being a politician. So they're hand-picked for your, the learners and they start to grow into something. Because I believe that I want to be starts in elementary school and it abruptly ends in middle school. When in middle school, their peers say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the young person says, well, I want to be a doctor and study medicine. And their peers, not knowing much because they're in middle school, for heaven's sakes, little knuckleheads, say, well, you can't be a doctor. You're not smart enough. 
And if the Young Elementary School has been involved in a bio lab, as suggested uh, in our video, for a couple of years, they can reply and say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I've been working in a bio lab since fourth grade with research, a biologist, and I have an advisor who's a doctor. Uh, we actually are working on some patentable uh, research. I don't know what you're talking about. Or if somebody says, I want to be a filmmaker, uh, and somebody says, no, you're not, you know, you can't write very good stories. And says, well, I don't know what you're talking about because I've done a couple of uh, short shorts and a bio picture. You should check out my YouTube channel. And I go uh, and work at the public access station. So here's the thing. In the future, there's going to be, uh, technology is going to make some incredible things happen. And at this conference here, you're looking at uh, the Consumer Electronics Show and the South by Southwest shows. Uh, there's going to be in the future where you'll be able to take your first grader for a walk. And this is actually pretty close to being developed. Um, go for a walk and you give your, your first grader your phone and says, how many different trees, types of trees do you spot as you go along? And you give your fourth grader your tablet. Say, what animals live off of these trees? Uh, you know, for foliage and you know where to live, and then the nuts and fruits off these trees. And so you go for a quarter mile walk, and the first grader gives you the phone and goes, "Oh my gosh, you found 25 of 30 trees! Wow, that was incredible!" Now, of course, you just laid the seed. He wants the next time he goes on that walk to find the five other trees. You know, the fourth graders shows you the tablet and she's taking video video and pictures and then Wikipedia searches. But in the near future, when it comes to technology, there's going to be hardware that will be able to fit in your pocket. And young people uh, and even old people will be able to do citizen science. This little uh, thing that will fit in your pocket will be able to do soil moisture, pH levels, gene splicing, uh, all the various different types of things. So you could literally have a biological chemical lab in the field to do water samples, soil samples, you know, you know, check everything, everything from animals and uh, foliage and, and uh, either down the tide pools or, you know, in your backyard, things of that nature. And it will communicate with your cell phone and your tablet, which will crunch the data and display the results in a user, easy, friendly understanding for whatever age level, uh, you know, or whatever learning curve that that learners learn at. That information then gets shared into a large uh, a pool of information for research and you create the, a healthy earth environment. So that if hikers were walking down this path and they uh, come across the stream, they can look at their, at their uh, cell phone and it'll say, uh, this water is pure to drink. It was sampled over the past uh, week seven times and each of the times it was, uh, it was uh, pure. This kind of uh, uh, research will be done uh, as we're out and about with the family uh, or uh, a, a class group. So uh, at this uh, trade show, uh, when I give my presentation, I'll go into depth about the projects that I'm working on as well as other projects and, uh, that are being done in research that are presently uh, available or just about to be available. Um, I look forward to uh, making the presentation uh, both in uh, Las Vegas and um, thank you very much.